Hello students, I am Mom Rose. If you are new to my channel, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button below and the notification bell for you to be updated on my upcoming videos. Happy learning! We are now on Module 2, Lesson 1, Rational Functions in Real Life. Before we begin, let us first define rational functions. It is a function in the form f of x is equals to p of x all over q of x, where p of x and q of x are polynomial functions and q of x is not a zero function. If you could still recall, polynomial function is a function with non-negative or positive integer exponents. Let us start with number 1. An object is to travel a distance of 10 meters. Express velocity v as a function of travel time t in seconds. Recall that velocity is equal to distance over time. With this, we can now get the rational function of number 1. The velocity as a function of travel time would be v of t is equal to our distance is fixed at 10 meters all over our time is still unknown so we'll just place t in creating our table of values we have here our time which is t and our velocity as a function of travel time is v of t we cannot start with a negative number obviously because there's no negative time however if we will start with zero remember that our denominator should not be equal to zero as stated in our definition and a fraction with a denominator of zero is undefined so we'll start with one 10 over one is 10. next is two 10 divided by two is five so we will simply substitute here and next, if we have 3 here, then that would be 10 divided by 3 is 3.33 or 3 and 1 third. Now you can have additional values of time here, but since it's not stated in the given, then I will just stop here. Number 2. Suppose that c of t is equal to 5t all over t squared plus 1 in milligram per milliliter represents the concentration of a drug in a patient's bloodstream t hours after the drug was administered construct a table of values for c of t for t is equal to 1 2 5 10 round off answers to three decimal places use the table to sketch the graph and interpret the results now first thing first our rational function is already given, so we'll just have to copy c of t is equal to 5t all over t squared plus 1. Then, according to the given, we have to construct a table of values for c of t where our t values are 1, 2, 5, and 10. However, we can start with t equals 0. Since if we will substitute 0 to t, then it won't give us a denominator of 0. In fact, our denominator would be 0 squared plus 1, so we'll still have 1. Therefore, our c of t here is 5 times 0 all over 0 squared plus 1 is still equal to 0. Let's proceed to 1. Again, to get our c of t here, we will simply substitute our value of t in this function. So 5 times our t is 1, all over our t is 1 again, so 1 squared plus 1. So this is 5 divided by 1 squared plus 1 is 2. So we have 5 over 2 or 2.5 in decimal. Next, let's have t equals 2. In that case, we will replace all values of t with 2. So in our numerator, we have 5 times 2 equals 10, and then that is 2 squared, so 4 plus 1, 5. So 10 divided by 5 is 2. Next, t equals 5. 
we'll be replacing all values of t here with 5. So our numerator is 5 times 5 is 25. All over, 5 squared is 25 plus 1, so 26. 25 all over 26 is this one. However, we are instructed to have only 3 decimal places. So we'll have to round off 9, 6, and then that is 2 since the number to its right is 5. Lastly, we have t equals 10. So the same thing, we'll just replace the value of t with 10. So our numerator is 5 times 10 equals 50. All over, 10 squared is 100 plus 1, 101. So 50 divided by 101 is this one. However, we have to get only 3 decimal places, so we have to round it off. Our final answer would be 0 0.49 and we will just copy 5 since the number to its right is 0. Now from our table, we can now graph 0, 0 is this point, 1, 2.5 is this point. And then we have 2, 2 here. We also have 5. And then 0 0.962. So that's close to 1. So in this portion. So approximately in this point. And lastly we have 10. 0 0.495 is close to half of 1, so it's here. Then we'll simply connect all of the points to get our graph. Looking at our graph, we can conclude that the maximum drug concentration occurs around 1 hour after the drug has been administered, and after that, it decreases until it is almost zero. We are now on number three. The distance from Manila to Baguio is around 250 kilometers. Letter A, how long will it take you to get to Baguio? If your average speed is 25 kilometers per hour, 40 kilometers per hour, 50 kilometers per hour. Let us start with 25 kilometers per hour. If the distance from Manila to Baguio is fixed at 250 kilometers and you are running a speed of 25 kilometers per hour, that means to say we will simply divide here 250 to 25. That will give us 10. Now the same unit here will be cancelled so what's left is hours. So it will take us 10 hours to get to Baguio if our average speed is 25 km per hour. Now let's proceed to 40 km per hour. Taking the same distance, we have 250 km, but this time it's all over 40 km per hour. So we'll simply divide 250 by 40, then it will give us 6.25 hours so it will take us 6.25 hours to get to Baguio if our average speed is 40 kilometers per hour next is 50 kilometers per hour doing the same thing we'll simply divide 250 kilometers to this time it's 50 kilometers per hour that will give us a result of 5 Therefore, it will take us 5 hours to get to Baguio if our average speed is 50 km per hour. Now let's proceed to B. Construct a function t of s where s is the speed of travel that describes the time it takes to drive from Manila to Baguio. Now to get our function t of s, we have to go back to our answers in A. We have here 10 hours, 5 hours, and then 6.25 hours. These are all our travel time when we divided the distance and 
the average speed of travel. Now, since our distance is fixed at 250 kilometers, we'll write it here, 250 all over our speed could vary. So, we'll just have to write S and this is our function. Now, let us try more examples. Number 1. The budget of a university organization is split evenly among its various committees. If they have a budget of 60,000, letter A, construct a function which would give the amount of money each of the number of committees would receive. To construct the function, we have to identify the variables. Let budget be B and the number of committees be C. Now, budget is dependent on the number of committees. Therefore, our committees here is our independent variable and our B is our dependent variable. So, our function here is the budget in terms of the number of committees. So, our budget will be divided equally to the number of committees that the university organization have. Now, our budget is fixed at 60,000 and we don't know yet the number of committees, so we'll just have to place C. Let's now have B. If the organization has 8 committees, how much would each committee have? So we will be using our function here in letter A. We have 60,000 all over C. Now our C here or the number of committees is 8. So we will simply replace C with 8. So 60,000 divided by 8, that will give us 7,500. Therefore, each committee will receive 7,500 pesos each. Number 2. A company has a budget of 90,000 to be evenly distributed among its various offices. The marketing office of the company receives twice the amount of money than the other offices. A. Given N as the number of offices in the company, construct a function which would give the amount of money each of the non-marketing offices would receive. So we have here our function B of N. Again, B is our budget which is very dependent on the number of offices which is N. So our function here is the budget in terms of the number of offices. So we will simply divide the budget over the number of offices that a company have. And our budget is fixed at 90,000 and our number of offices is still unknown. Now remember that the marketing offices receives twice, so we'll have to add 1 here in the number of offices. Now let's have B. If the company have 5 offices, how much would each of the non-marketing offices receive? Now we will be using our function in A where our N is 5. So we have here 90,000 divided by 5 plus 1 is 6. That will give us 15,000. So each of the non-marketing offices receive 15,000 pesos each. So here's the breakdown of the budget. The marketing office will receive 30,000 pesos and the rest of the non-marketing offices will receive 15,000 pesos each, a total of 90,000 pesos. That is all for today. Thank you and see you on our next video lesson.